she's walking down 110th Street. She's, <laughs> she's causing new potholes. The Ninja Turtles are having to do new drywall and fix their Very bookcase. Very expensive in New York. And she's upset that people found her attractive. <laughs> I hear a lot of people upset about the fat pride issue, fat shaming, and I, I want to hear from you, I want to know why, whichever side you're on, what is it about the other side that upsets you? Because this is an issue where there's a lot of controversy, but sometimes people can't articulate why exactly. I'll tell you exactly what it is for me. It's the compulsion of language. It's not about, it's not about chubby women, it's not about mansplaining. Here's, here's what I think people need to remember. Most men find most women attractive. Yeah. Okay, everyone in this room has uh, who has a girlfriend or mothers, sisters, I can think of everyone right just connecting from us, at least 12 women, a variance of eight inches and probably 60 pounds between them, and all of them would be considered attractive. So let me say, this. we do not expect women to look or be one way. Men don't expect that. No. My problem with the fat pride movement is when you demand that we deem all women to be attractive in all Always. It's the compulsion of language. Reasonable? Let me know. Um, so here is what's happening right now. There's a show on Netflix again launching called uh, Insatiable, and there's uh, there's already a petition to stop it. Let's roll a clip so you have some context for it. My name is Patty. <laughs> High school was a nightmare. Fatty Patty's huge. Fireball. Every That's day I wonder how great. much more yeah. of this can I take? Right here. Having my jaw wired shut lost me more than just my summer vacation. Now, I could be the former fatty who turned into a brain. Or an athlete. Or a right, princess. No. We have had enough of this. You can go, I, I don't even think the show is out yet, if I'm not mistaken. No. Uh, it doesn't stop people from already being outraged. Cue the tweets. <laughs> my favorite one here is, uh, it says, this is still telling kids to lose weight to win. Hmm. Yes. Bad idea. Now, <laughs> bad idea to lose weight, right? The response right. really shouldn't be all that surprising, given the long list of, of fat pride leading romantic comedies, which brings us to this week's uh, 7 Plus 1. You forgot the fun in the chamber! There, there's always one in the chamber, and uh, by the way, uh, we have like three magazines today, just yes, so you yeah. know. Because, uh, but these are yes. these were the most popular, of course, uh, fat pride films that a lot of people, a lot of people don't realize. Uh, number seven was uh, size twenty seven dresses. That was a big one. That was very popular. And uh, number six is was, was actually a sequel to another one. But you've got heart disease. That was a big one. Check your Jeez. check your inbox. Oh my gosh. Number five, she's all fat. In case you know. uh, number four, the devil wears Lane Bryant. <laughs> <laughs> number three, Ouch. ten things I ate without you. Aw, that's just me. Yeah, number two, isn't she chubby? A lot of people weren't entirely <laughs> sure. Isn't this she came from. Yeah. Was that Edward, uh, Edward Burns? Isn't she lovely? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was Freddie Prince Jr. Uh, number one, how to crush a guy in ten seconds. That sounds. <laughs> Okay, reload, back to number seven. Uh, we have so many of these. Uh, 13 going on diabetes was a really popular one for a while. Number six, number two, number six, father of the fat bride. They were pretty much... Uh, yeah, different... different at that point, they weren't even really original. No. no. It was like Brian. doing the Ocean's Eleven with women, only fat. Oh, <laughs> number five, failure to lunch. That was one. And it's an ill-fated sequel. Uh, number four, I took care of it. So... <laughs> Number three, all you can eat breakfast, brunch, lunch, dinner, dinner, second dinner, cocktail hour, midnight snack at Tiffany's. That was one. Jeez. Also was really racist with the fat Asian Mickey Rooney. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was very insen really, insensitive. Really weird, uh, John Hughes classic number two, 16 cheeseburgers. Oh. <laughs> Makes sense. Again with the racist Asian character. Again with the yes, racist Asian character. But hilarious, That's, nonetheless. That was Fat Duck Dong. Uh, and, and number one, uh, there, Girl Interrupted by a Coronary. <laughs> re re reload, we have another seven for you. <laughs> Number seven, while you were sleeping, I raided the fridge was another one. Number six, <laughs> that happens. Yeah. portly woman. Um, that was one that Jason Alexander, little known fact in that uh -huh. film. Number five. You actually played the portly woman. It's true. Can't run away bride. That was one. She struggles. Oh, uh, I see that. Number four, <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey, fat version. I don't even, that's like the expurgated version of Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> With fat. Starring Lena Dunham. It's like they're getting lazy and desperate for time. Yeah, it's almost like, I think some of these are straight yeah. to video. Number three, the sisterhood of the unnecessary but actually necessary maternity yeah. pants. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Number two, P.S. I ate you. Um, uh, and this is, it was actually a sequel. Uh, no, wait, I always get these confused when Harry, when Sleepless in Seattle was not actually one, but uh, 
number one was when Harry fed Sally. That was a big <laughs> one. And uh, of course, actually, the uh, the plus one top rom-com uh, fat pride film of all time is I Feel Pretty, starring Amy <laughs> Schumer. That's been this week's 7 Plus One. You forgot to find in the chamber. Always forget. That's how it ends all the villains. The Germans. You're the out. Germans. No, I'm not. Uh, by the way, hit the bell. Join uh, Mug Club if you haven't hit the notification bell. That's what you keeps us going. We do yeah. the show every single day. Uh, full hour. And uh, if you want to try it out, live streams every Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern. Okay. So uh, I think the fat pride issue, this really is um, more symptomatic of, of the yeah. left. And it's the, the root causes here are greed, enablement, and ingratitude. And these are the same things with, with, with every other problem you see from the left. So what, what happens if someone is greedy and you enable them? It all ultimately leads to complete and total ingratitude. Yeah. Um, how do I mean this? Greed. Let's, let's start with the left. Let's go economically and then move into fat pride. Yeah. For example, today's progressive left, they accuse the wealthy of being greedy. But the wealthy aren't the ones trying to take anything from you. When we talk about the wealthy, the one percent. Right. I think it's joint, depending which number you use, three hundred something thousand or four hundred something thousand joint household income. Yeah, they pay most of the taxes. Okay, we're not talking about the economic system and justice or someone who works a pair of stars. We understand, but the truth is, when you're just looking at the general population, it's the progressive leftists who are the ones trying to take what others have earned: healthcare, universal income, internet, um, and of course, the greed parallels with with obesity. You're the greedy pig who ate too much. The non-obese people are not trying to take your food. <laughs> you're taking theirs. <laughs> and then you're mad that they're just not on board with it. So then it leads us to enablement with the fat yeah. pride issue. I think that's probably the one that people Biggest. are the most obvious. Yeah. The left enables bad behavior because it feels good. Yeah. As long as it feels good, it's about feel, rather than examining themselves and reflecting, um, Good, okay, we've done this, but how much flack have we caught for this? Uh, let, let's use a few examples. AIDS. AIDS was oh, something yeah. specific behavioral patterns lead to catching AIDS. Don't judge! Mm. <laughs> it's, it's perfectly legitimate a lifestyle. If anyone else is, it, okay. How about a lifestyle we should, called? We should all be getting AIDS. We should, we, we you better. should be so lucky. I you regret, get AIDS. I regret. And you get AIDS. Oprah, by the way, said, I think two in five heterosexual couples by like 1995. We uh, have that yeah. somehow. We did it's it like in, a, in a zero. Just five. search Stephen Crowder. That's an advertisement. She was, it, was an, it was an AIDS surplus <laughs> yeah. she had to give out. Hey, by the way, the lifestyle is called not having sex with men in truck stop stalls. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like just, this, that's it. It's the single most preventable disease in human history. It's 100% preventable. <laughs> how about instead we have a pill? How about no pill? How about you just, how about you just don't uh, uh, have orgies in truck stops? Let's go with the pill. Okay, so <laughs> uh, another example. I mean, obviously abortion. Yeah. You have no right to yeah. judge. It's just as moral of a choice. That Whether you're pro-life or pro-choice, listen, you have the right to judge. We've enabled women to make it as easy, actually easier, than putting a child up for adoption. If you're a serially unemployed loser, let's just give them universal income. Right. It's that's a human right. It. You don't. You don't know. <laughs> it, that's the word, right? Nuance. Yeah. For an Anna Casper, it's nuance. Everything is nuance. Giant fat land whale. Who are you to judge? They're just as healthy and beautiful as everyone else. <laughs> By the way, they want to change it from diabetes to livabetes. Is actually yeah. that does, really pushing a, that it does hard. sound better. Yeah, that does, it does sound, sound better. Die is more. Uh, you still lose a descriptive, foot. though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and this this leads us to in, in, in gratitude, and, and and rather than you know just becoming a, a manatee. Um, uh, you know, or being grateful that you live in a country with even the option to become obese. That's one thing, yeah. too. The left is constantly, America is the fattest, stupidest. Well, I, I think it's a great thing that we have the problem of overabundance, right? Yeah. I'm still grossed out, but I think it's a good <laughs> problem to have. Better than starvation. Mm. And you have all of the tools readily available to fix it. Mm. Instead, people bitch. Yep. They bitch because you now feel entitled to not only a seriously uh, grave health risk, but entitled to other people's opinions regarding your beauty. That's the issue here. You demand that the public opinion change in the face of evolutionary biology and, by the way, scientific medical consensus. Not only, let's, let's not even say consensus, medical accuracy, <laughs> truth. It doesn't matter who agrees on it. <laughs> I'm never the problem. Exactly You're I'm never saying. the problem. It's society that has to be changed to accommodate them. Right. Instead of dropping a few pounds, we have to make all movie theater and airplane seats bigger. <laughs> These same people are always bitching about privilege. How, how privileged are they? they, they we're too, I'm too fat is the problem. Oh, you're privileged and yeah. you're exercising it more. I'm exercising restraint. And then we need to get bigger seats because I actually like the roomy seats. We kind of all benefit. The issue is we go even as far as to shame those people who take care of their bodies. Yeah. Right? Now people, are, they're, they're thin is, they try to say thin privilege. So we can't, we can't shame people for eating themselves into obesity. And I'm not saying you should shame people, but you can't even make a judgment saying this is a bad call. Yeah. Um, but we can shame people who exercise enough that 
they can have a slice of pizza on the weekend, for example. Mm. And remember, remember the idea of tolerance? Yeah. Remember that? Remember that idea? So the definition, I think I have it in front of me, is yeah, sympathy or indulgence for beliefs or practices differing from a conflicting opinion with one's own. The, the act of a I don't even think that's going to be in the nomenclature for our kids. No. The definition no. of tolerance. It used to be, you know, don't make fun of fat people. We all agree. Don't yeah. be a bully. Of course, that's fine. Listen, I was chubby, seventh, eighth, ninth grade. I was short, yeah. fat, then really tall and skinny. I didn't shave until I was 21. The definition is the, the <laughs> act of celebrating everything. Exactly. Yeah. That's a big difference. The left doesn't even allow differing opinions anymore. Yeah. They're blatant in the fact that they must engineer public opinion to match theirs exactly, or they will gaslight you. Right? Let's go from, from gay marriage to men in little girls' rooms. Yeah. Taxing the wealthy to being forced to praise. Now, now it's not, it, you don't believe me? It's forced praise of morbidly obese people. Instead of weigh-ins, NAFA has yay-ins. I yay ravishing. Are you kidding me? I am halfway no. between sexy and lovely. No, you're not. Oh, I yay sexy. <laughs> that was very bad. Halfway between diabetes, <laughs> type 2, and death. Yeah. <laughs> I love Brodick just a simple answer. No, you're not. <laughs> Like, this was when we covered last week, this, this, this land whale who marched down Times Square in a bikini, right? This comes yeah. from Cosmo. And uh, she complained that she was actually, people were actually catcalling her. Yeah. You know, like they wanted to get all up in her, in her crevices and stuff, whatever it was. Um, I mean, here's a woman <laughs> pick, who pick is, a crevice. she's walking down 110th Street. She's, <laughs> she's causing new potholes. The Ninja Turtles are having to do new drywall and fix their <laughs> Very expensive case. in New York. And she's upset that people found her attractive. <laughs> this is the problem people have. It's the, compel <laughs> it's the compulsion of life. The definition of tolerance is predicated on the idea of understanding and compromise that we just talked about. So tell me. Where is it? Well, we just talked about uh, gay marriage, transgender issues, wealth redistribution, right now fat pride. Tell me, where is the offered compromise from the left on any of those issues I just mentioned? Any of those issues I just mentioned, you have to tolerate, they have to be willing to find a middle ground. Mm. Name one! You can't force people to accept someone. You can't force an apology. You can't force people to love someone. And you can't force people to be sexually attracted to ever, by the way, this is the thing. Most guys are sexually attracted to most women. You don't have to be perfect. We just don't want to have to be told that we're a racist, sexist, misogynistic pig if we are not attracted to all of the things. Mm. And that's, by the way, it's, it's just, it's also medical accuracy. That's why Amazon Prime recently really, they, they struggled with their recent docu-series, celebrating obese 75-year-olds. <laughs> it's uh, not coming down the pike anytime soon. Not gonna happen. If you like this video, subscribe or click the notification button next to the subscribe button because YouTube's decided that subscribe doesn't mean anything and if you want to actually know about our videos coming out you have to hit the notification button also if you're a fan you want the daily late night show subscribe to mug club at lottowithcutter.com slash mug club thanks for stopping this is just it's girthy